Sunday, a time for remembering. And the book of Hebrew, in their religious philosophy, they give us something to think about. And it goes like this. Goodwill or good will come to him who is generous and lends freely, who conducts his affairs with justice. A righteous person will be remembered forever. And part of our purpose of coming together to worship God like this is to learn for ourselves how to live a righteous life, isn't it? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I greet you. Welcome you to worship. You may be seated if you wish. By the way, we want you to be sure and take this red vinyl folder. Each one of you have one in your book rack. Would you take that and register your presence? Pass it down the aisle. Bring it back again. And uh, this is important because you are important and we keep a record of your being here with us. If you're worshiping with us for the first time, if you would turn to the inside of your worship guide, there are some aids that we list there that might assist you in your worship with us. And then if you would go to the back page, and I don't think so, I think this is, okay, you go underneath that, you find a, a paragraph that lists names. Those names are a list of our ministry of caring. And today we want to bring you up to date on some uh, pit a Bonnie Van Beek's mother who had serious heart, open heart surgery. Not this different between open heart and bypass, but this was open heart surgery. Is home. She's doing so well and preparing for the second phase of that very critical surgery. So we're delighted with Bonnie and her family over this. Jerry and Marilyn Fields, our understanding is, are with family today celebrating their 50th anniversary. So we uh, <coughs> rejoice with them. There are families that belong to our fellowship that are dealing with some critical situations regarding children. Some are health-wise, both for recently born or not yet born children. And then there are also some critical situations being dealt with in regards to custody situations, and you're going to notice that we're going to be addressing these in our prayer this morning. And by the way, we have a little miracle baby with us here this morning. And so we just thank God. Would you, do you mind standing up and just showing us this little baby? This is... This is the little guy that I can't explain what God did, but God worked a miracle for this little baby. And they're here with us today. You have a couple inserts. You'll notice that the one is black on white, right, and that is our announcements. And you want to read every one of those very carefully. The first announcement deals with our Peace with Justice Sunday. And the other insert does too. And I think Pastor Andy will be referring to this more later on. But just take note of this. And of all of the announcements, every one is important. But note the one that's opportunities to offer service. And then, a week from today, and I've taken a real risk. I guarantee the first service that will be sunny and warm next Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> In the afternoon, Jim and Teresa Grillwood are inviting us to come and join them at their lake property to view the memorial cabin that is being built in memory of Sam. Now, you just don't drive up to their, their property. You take a boat to it. And so down on the announcement board, there's more information and there's also directions. So you'll want to pay some attention to that. Okay? Andy, before I turn it over to you, 
I understand that in the midst of all of this fine looking group, that there's a birthday today. There is. That's what I understand. It must be this special smile here. <laughs> Let's say happy birthday to Jenna. Is that okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. did not take any of your birthday money to pay me to set a share of this. <laughs> Pastor Abby. Pastor Deburn, one thing I wanted to, to mention, you guaranteed that weather for Sam Seattle next Sunday. On behalf of Alyssa and John, can you back that weather prediction up to Saturday for them as well as they celebrate their vows of marriage with their family on Saturday? With, with, with Dave and Denise's support, I will. Okay. <laughs> I had a couple of families come talk to me this past week, week and a half ago, saying this summer is going to be crazy for us. We got weddings, we got family reunions. We're going to be to the four winds all summer, and I think we're going to be here for maybe all of two Sundays. Is there any chance that maybe we could try something else this year? And so we're going to do a little experiment. If you miss Sunday morning worship, you can come and join us on Wednesday evening here at the church at 6 30 p.m. Now let me warn you, if you come on Sunday morning and you come on Wednesday expecting a different sermon, you might be disappointed. It'll be a repeat of Sunday morning's worship on Wednesday night for those families and individuals who are traveling, who maybe can't be with us for 8.30 or 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And so the sermon, the scripture, those things will be repeated. The music will look a little bit different. It might be more of a blend between 8.30 and 11. We'll have some hymns. We'll have some contemporary songs. It'll be very informal, come as you are, here in the sanctuary. So beginning this Wednesday night at 6.30, we're going to do it for the month of June and see how it goes. If we have the same five people all month, we might rethink our plan. But if it turns out that it's serving the needs of our congregation and is giving us a good opportunity to invite those who don't have a church home to come with us in a time that is more comfortable than maybe Sunday morning, then hopefully we'll see this bear through. So please pray with me that this will be a, a beneficial thing for our congregation, but also our community as we seek to reach out in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Jordan, did you have anything else? That's it. Excellent. Except no, you go ahead. I was going to have to stand up and say good morning. That's all I was going to do. Why don't you do it? You do it. <laughs> Let's stand in green. That's the peace of Jesus Christ. Good morning. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Just to prove that I'm uh, backwards from everybody else, I'm only going to be in town on Sunday for the next three weeks, so I had to be different. Like you know, let's start this time with word prayer. Dear Father God, we come humbly today as the glad receivers of your mercy and your grace. We're here to acknowledge there is absolutely nobody like you. Nobody above you and nobody beside you. And our desire is to worship you in spirit and truth as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We thank you and we praise you for who you are and what you've done. We're glad you're in this place and in us as believers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
Today we pray to you for those children who innocently and helplessly stand as pawns, played for the satisfaction of thoughtless, selfish adults whose love is only for their selfish possessions. Lord, as Jesus came to the defense of those children that even the disciples saw as intruders into the affairs of adult business, we want to come to the defense of those children who will helplessly wait for the decisions of human judges to determine their well-being. Oh Lord God, through the action of our humanly devised courts, come to the defense of those who cannot defend themselves. They were created to be loved and cared for. Place them within the security of a human trust where they will be loved and cared for by those who lovingly care for them. These children were created to be made aware of a loving God who created them and loves them, place them within the surroundings of a human trust where an introduction to God and the teaching of God's word will be a part of their own belief. And Almighty God, you have promised to bring your divine judgment against all who would harm a child. If necessary, show the power of your judgment now to protect those innocents and lives that you have placed within our reach to love, to care for, and to teach them about the living God. Our Lord, we do not live a moment when we are not totally dependent upon you. In this part of your world, we depend upon the harvest of grain to make our living. And Lord, multitudes of people in our world depend upon that grain to nourish the needs of their bodies. We thank you for the moisture that has watered the earth to prepare it to give life to these crops. But Lord, now our farmers need a time for the drying of the fields in order that they can complete the planting of those crops. Would you bring them this drying time to prepare the fields for the completion of the planting? And as they wait and as they watch, let them see the goodness of God before them and let their love for God and faith in God increase. We thank you that we can join with you in caring for those who struggle to overcome illnesses and to regain health. And together we pray again for the Hammond family, for that unborn child. Be to that family the Savior that you are. We pray for the Gorean family, for Anne Shelby. Lord, give them wisdom as they seek to provide good for those children involved. And be the defender of these children that they seek to love and care for. We pray for Aaron and Henry. And for Steve and Peggy Ellis as they care for family. Let these lives be blessed with God's special blessing. We pray for Bonnie Van Beek's mother. We thank you for the successful surgery. Now would you prepare her for the next surgery that she might continue to be a blessing to her family. Remember Marlon Schultz and bring physical stability to his life. Lord, we just bring these and so many other needs to you, but you know them. And now hear us as together we pray in the name of our Savior as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Like to invite our little ones to come forward at this time. This, this is where children belong. <coughs> Welcome, that's part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. This, this is where children belong. Welcome, that's part of the worshiping throng. Water, God's word, bread, and cup, prayer, and song. This is where children belong. Good morning. 
Thanks, Ian. Okay, I have a question for you. Would you believe me if I told you that one plus one plus one equals one? What would Mrs. Patton say? No. But it does. One plus one plus one equals what? Oh, sometimes it equals three, but sometimes it equals one. That probably wouldn't get you a very good grade in math class. Today is a holiday. It's the last holiday for a long time in the life of the church. It's going to be all the way until after school starts again before we see another one. This Sunday is called Trinity Sunday. Do you know what that word Trinity means? Do you know anyone named Trinity? It's kind of a popular name in those days. No? Trinity means three. So the one plus one plus one equals three it has some merit there. But we say that God is one. It's kind of a mystery. And I wanted to play a little game to sort of maybe help us wrap our brains around that a little bit. It's really hard to understand, even for adults. But if you would join two friends and get in a circle and hold hands, stand up. Stand in a circle with three people. Come here, Carter. There's three of you. You two come here with me. Carter, come here. Stand with these boys. They look like they don't want to hold girls' hands. <laughs> no, no, right here, Carter, these two guys. Okay, grab hands. Come here, Kennedy. Good. Grab hands with each other in a circle. It's okay. We won't do it very long, I promise. <laughs> no, grab hands. Grab hands. Nope. Let the people in your circle. This is harder than I thought. <laughs> okay. We'll do it like this. If I say this, it might be easier. Play ring around the roses. Ah, now we got it. Ready? Go ahead and do it. You guys spread out that way towards past and burn. You guys spread out towards the two. Now be careful when you go down, you don't want to bump your head. Ready? Ring around the rosies, pocket full of rosies. Hopscotch, hopscotch, we all fall down. Good. Now, oh, most of you did it too, you kept holding hands too. Go ahead and stand back up, grab hands one more time. Now, when we're playing that, if I started to rock to the left, Maya, what happened to you? What happened? Yeah, you had to go to the left too, huh? And what about you, Kennedy? Does that make you have to move too? You see, when we choose to be connected like this, we all respond together. Mallory, raise your right hand. Noah, what happened to your hand? Well, she dropped it, huh? But if she held on to it, your hand would have gone up too, right? Imagine that these are the three persons of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Carter, you're looking at just the right spot. Take a look at the top of the glass up there. You see those three windows in the top? There's the hand pointing downward. That's the symbol of God the Father. And then the crown with the cross, that's the Son, Jesus Christ. And then the dove pointing downward. And we've got another one down here in the wood. That dove pointing downward is the Holy Spirit. And the three persons of God stay connected just like this when we're playing. So that if one person does something, the other two in the circle have to do it too. Come on back over here and have a seat. How many of you are thoroughly confused at this point? How many of you are thoroughly confused at this point? <laughs> Trinity is one of those honestly crazy kind of ideas that we can think about forever and we'll never, ever figure it out completely. But that's okay. Because what we need to remember is that God is a God of connection, a God of sharing, just like we were sharing, and a God of love. That's all we have to understand about Trinity, is that it means God is love. So will you pray with me? Repeat after me. Noah, dear God, repeat after me. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for love. Help us to share as you share. Help us to love as you love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day.
Father's Day is June 16th, and once again the Missions Commission is offering an opportunity to support a very worthy project, the, the Church World Service Blankets. And there's a blanket hanging down on the handrail at the bottom of the stairs coming up to the sanctuary. In 2012, nearly 22,000 blankets were distributed as a part of this program. Blankets were sent uh, in response to disaster relief, uh, sent to homeless shelters within our own country, and some are distributed in impoverished areas throughout the world. Some of the blankets are used for warmth and some protect against all inclement weather. A gift of $5 can provide one of these uh, blankets. In the next couple weeks, you may offer, or you may uh, give a gift in memory or honor of a father or grandfather or any other man who has had an impact in your life. For the next two weeks, uh, there will be a bulletin insert which you can designate your gift and just leave it in the offering plate. So we thank you. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Roger. I also wanted to mention uh, we have all kinds of opportunities for giving today if you didn't notice. Inside your bulletin is an envelope. This is one of the six special Sundays in the life of the United Methodist Church called Peace with Justice Sunday. You can read more about the ministries that are supported through that offering, both in the bulletin and on the envelope. This is the only Sunday this year that you will see that particular envelope come out. Also, our bishop, we have a new bishop, Bruce O, and he has challenged us for a miracle offering at annual conference coming up in two weeks. That is, he wants to raise $100,000 for a specific purpose. And that is to plant a new ministry center, a new church, a new worshiping congregation right in the midst of the mission field which has come to our backyard, western North Dakota, the oil fields of the Bible. We have a couple at Cornerstone United Methodist in Watertown, a lay couple who lived and worked up there for a while and have come down and have felt the call of God to go back up there and to start this new ministry. Now, if you have any idea of how Cornerstone has started ministry before, take a look at Sioux Falls and Embrace United Methodist Church. I have no doubt that this couple from Cornerstone is going to do amazing things for the kingdom of God up in western North Dakota, but they need our help to get that started. And so we have been asked as churches in the conference to give money at an annual conference for this church planting. Arthur United Methodist Church in North Dakota congregation that worships about 60 people on a Sunday, has said they will match dollar for dollar up to $50,000. Another private organization has said they will match up to $25,000. So $75,000 in matching funds has already been identified. To give you an idea, if every church in the conference gave $400, that'd be hundred grand right there. But we, right now, are about the 11th largest in terms of worshiping congregation size. And so, as you can imagine, it might be a little easier for us to come up with $400 than it would be for, say, Wakanda, or Irene, or Viber, churches I used to serve. So I want to encourage you to consider giving generously as we look beyond ourselves, as we look beyond Central, as we look beyond Millbank for the furtherance of the kingdom of God and building United Methodist presence up in the oil fields. Thank you for considering these giving opportunities. This morning, our appointed gospel lesson comes from the Gospel of John. And I want to encourage you, if you've got a Bible on your phone, Dan Lindholm, or if you've got a, a Bible that you brought with you, or if you've got a Bible in the queue in front of you, pull those out and read along with me. We're going to be reading... John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15, it'll also be on the screen. Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you in all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And the Spirit will declare to you the things that are to come. The Holy Spirit will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said, he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Yes. We pray with you. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks 
for the blessing of this day. We give you thanks for a day that we get to gather with family and remember our loved ones who have gone by on this Memorial Day weekend. And likewise, Lord, we give you thanks for the mystery of yourself, Holy Trinity. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our ears and our minds to hear a new word spoken to us today that we might be forever changed. We ask it in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, there once was a preacher who did this children's moment, and she gathered all the kids at her feet, and she said to them, Today, I want to tell you about the image of God. Do you know, kids, that you were made in the image of the three-in-one God? And one little boy shoots his hand right away. Oh, oh, oh! And she was a little taken aback, and she says, Yes, what is it, Johnny? And he says, I saw my mom just the other day in the image of God. The preacher wasn't quite sure what to do with that, and she said, Really? Tell me about it. And he said, well, we went to J.C. Penny so Mom could get a new shirt. And when she came out of the changing room and she stood in front of the mirror, all of a sudden there were three of her. <laughs> Trinity Sunday. Today is the day that we celebrate triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And incidentally, this is the only day in the liturgical calendar that we lift up a doctrine. Not an event, not something that happened in the kingdom, but rather a central tenet of belief. Actually, I would tell you that it is the main tenet. Everything else hangs on this idea of Trinity. Today, we remember that God is first and foremost a mystery. We have to say that first. God is a mystery. St. Augustine was known to have said that those who deny the Trinity will lose their salvation, but those who try to figure out the Trinity in its fullness will lose their sanity. We'll go crazy if we try to figure out who God is in his fullness. For every answer that we get about who God is, we'll get 20 more questions that pop up for us. We humans, in our finiteness, simply cannot comprehend the fullness of who God is. And that's what Jesus is saying at the very beginning of today's reading to the disciples. He says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You can't understand them yet. So I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to reveal it to you. God is a mystery. Now while we affirm God is a mystery, at the same time we don't have to be entirely silent about who God is. We know that our language falls short of being able to describe God in fullness, but scripture is pretty clear about some things that we can say definitively about who God is. In our gospel passage today, we read, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For the Spirit will not speak on his own, but he'll speak whatever he hears. And Jesus goes on, The Spirit will glorify me, and what is his will declare this. Jesus says, All that is Jesus's is also the Father. It's really convoluted. It's hard to read the first, I don't know, 20 times you try to read it. It's a pretty confusing passage. But essentially what Jesus is saying is the Spirit shares what is Jesus's. And Jesus shares what is the Father's. These three are in such perfect sharing, such perfect relationship. They share all of life and work. They are essentially one. Now, speaking of work, oftentimes we want to assign specific work to each of the three persons. And some more liberal theologians have actually been gone so far as to rename the persons of the Trinity as Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. That is, saying Creator, God, Father, Redeemer, God, Son, Sustainer, God, Spirit. But we can't do that. We can't do that because Scripture, first of all, doesn't call them those things. But second of all, because you can't take the work away from one without taking it away from the other two. Let me give you an example. Let's go with that first name, Creator. The implication is God the Father is the only one who is the Creator. But all we have to do is look at the very first verses of the entire Bible to dispel to that. In the beginning, Genesis reads, in the beginning, when 
God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Now, do you remember the sermon last week for Pentecost Sunday? We talked about that word for wind. In both Greek and Hebrew, there's three different meanings. Do you remember what they were? There was wind, there was breath. good breath, and Spes-pes. spirit. Wow. Spirit, wind, breath, and spirit. This word in Hebrew is, by the way, ruach. Say that. Ruach. ruach. Good job, man. Ruach. You gotta say it like you're ruach. spitting on the end. Ruach. Ruach. Good. <laughs> ruach. Wind, breath, and spirit. Now remember, in Hebrew, it's not wind or breath or spirit. It's all three together. The ancient Hebrew culture held all of these. So if you read this, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters, while the spirit of God swept over the face of the waters, while the breath of God swept over the face of the waters, the very opening words of the Bible tell us that God's Spirit was also present at the beginning, at the creation of the world. Well, what about Jesus? Skip ahead to the New Testament. We'll go to John's Gospel, and it will echo this quite a bit, actually. John writes, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. We know that the Word of God is Jesus Christ. And so we can read unequivocally right there that all things came into being through Jesus. And without Him, not one thing came into being. I want to encourage you, if you go home, you can do the same exercise with Redeemer or with Sustainer. There's plenty of Bible passages out there that you can find that will affirm that all three persons of the Trinity share this work. And so it's not appropriate for us to try and rename the persons of the Trinity based on the work that we want to assign them. All three share in everything. Perfect sharing, making them one. Now, in fact, I would argue that we should not define God by the work that God does. But that's what we tend to do, isn't it, as humans? We like to define our image by what we do. If you go to a party, if you go to a gathering where there are new people there, what's the one question that you can count on is going to be asked as you get to know each other? That's right. What do you do? What do you do? Well, I'm a teacher. I'm a chiropractor. I'm a farmer. I'm a preacher. That's a quick way to kill any political conversation. <laughs> <laughs> We have a tendency to reduce our identity to what we do. But friends, we are so much more than just what we do. Our image, our identity is not tied up with what we do. Just like God's identity, who God is, God's image, is so much more than just what God does. And that's the real implication behind the mystery of Trinity. It's not about what we do. It's about the mutual relationship. It's about love. In Genesis chapter 1 we read, So God created humankind in his image. Male and female, he created them. This passage isn't telling us that God made us with one nose and two eyes and ten fingers because that's what God looks like. Not at all. This passage, indeed all of Scripture, testifies to the fact that God is Trinity. That is, God is a God of relationship and sharing and unconditional love. And we, my friends, are built the same way. We are made in the image of God. That image of relationship. Being made in the image of God, that means that we're not defined by what we do, but rather we are defined by who we love. We are defined by who loves us. We are defined by our relationships. And so, what are the relationships in your life that define who you are? 
What are those relationships that define who you are? And which of those relationships is in need of attention? Which of those relationships is breaking or broken? Who have you refused to forgive? From whom do you need to ask forgiveness? Is it your sibling or parent? Is it a coworker or a friend? Is it your spouse or a significant other? So what does it look like when we begin to live into the image of God from which we were created? What does that look like? What does it look like when we focus more on our relationships than on our work? Irma Bombeck wrote, if I had my life to live over again, I would have invited friends over to dinner, even if the carpet was stained and the sofa was faded. I would have sat on the lawn with my children and not worried about grass stains. I would never have bought anything just because it was practical, wouldn't soil, or was guaranteed to last a lifetime. When my child kissed me impetuously, I would never have said, later, now go get washed up for dinner. There would have been more I love yous, more I'm sorry's. But mostly, given another shot at life, I would seize every minute. I would look at it, and I would really see it. I would live it. And I would never give it back. Sisters and brothers, on this Memorial Day weekend, let us remember that we have one shot at this precious gift called life. And if we are to grow in the love and grace of Jesus Christ, we must seek to be in right relationship with God and with others. And so I encourage you this week, this weekend, this very day, seek to be restored to right relationships with those from whom you've been alienated. Forgive those who have wronged you and seek forgiveness from those that you've offended. Say the words, I'm sorry. Say the words, I forgive you. Say the words, I love you. And when you do this, you will take another baby step forward and be restored into that image of God that you were created in. That image of love. That image of relationships. My friends, we are built for relationship. Amen. And amen. Amen. I want to invite you to join with me in a special Memorial Day prayer that is on the screen as we remember loved ones who have gone by, I invite you to pray responsibly with me. Almighty God, before whom stand the living and the dead, we, your children, whose mortal life is but a hand's breath, give thanks to you. For all those through whom you have blessed our pilgrimage, whose lives that have empowered us, whose influence is a healing grace, we live our grateful hearts. For the dear friends and family members whose faces we see no more, but whose love is with us forever. We live with our thankful hearts. For the teachers and companions of our childhood and youth, and for the members of our household of faith who worship you now in heaven. We live with our thankful hearts. For those who sacrifice to themselves, our brothers and sisters who have given their lives for the sake of others. We live with our that we may hold them all in continual remembrance and ever think of them as with you. In that city whose gates are not shut by day and where there is no night, we live that we may now be dedicated to working for a world where labor is rewarded, fear dispelled, and the nations made one. O Lord, Savior, people, 
and bless your heritage. Day by day we magnify you and worship your name forever and ever. I'd like to invite our praise team to come forward again as they lead us in worship. And I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward as they receive our morning tithes, our offerings, and the special gifts that we have been given the opportunity to provide for us.
Say the words, I'm sorry. Say the words, I forgive you. Say the words, I love you. For we are made in the image of God, the image of relationship. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. This day and all the days. Amen.